everyone, welcome back. I have missed you all. This is actually the first long video I'm recording in about four months, maybe even five, which is crazy, but I've been on a bit of a YouTube shorts push the past couple of months. Um, and I'm slowly gonna ease my way back into longer videos. And I, I did a poll, a community poll on YouTube a couple of weeks ago and asked you all whether you wanted to do a Palm Sims return, a not so berry legacy or the disney princess challenge and the disney princess challenge won so that will be a series you will see over the next couple of months on my youtube channel and in parallel we're going to be doing the career builds so that is what we're doing today we are doing a home for an artist we are working our way through every single sims 4 career and i think previously hang on is this the fourth or the third no, it's gotta be more than three. We've done criminal, chef, teacher, floralist? I, I don't know if that's uploaded yet. There's a handful that we've previously done, but this is the next one, an artist's home, and these builds are all gonna be up on the gallery. They are not using custom content, so they are available for you to download, fill with your stories, personalize them, and yeah, they're specific to the careers that you might be wanting to use and play with. So for our artist's home, I have put her, put her in Brindleton Bay, in one of my favorite lots in the game, actually the boathouse lot, because it has a beautiful view of the beach. I thought it would be the perfect view for an artist to have an easel, actually there's a couple of easels in this build, right on the balcony and just be inspired by the views. So this felt like appropriate for our artist. And I wanted, uh, the interior is obviously fun, colorful, bright, bold, um, feels very eclectic. And I kind of wanted to bring that into the exterior as well. So here I'm going through different wallpapers to find pops of color and how we can incorporate that. Orange was a key color throughout. I just thought orange would be really fun for an artist. So I go for an orange front door, for example, and a few other um, different orange things outside and inside. Um, but yeah, so an artist's home is the next one for our career uh, career series. But in the next couple of days, or maybe even before this, you will see episode one of our Disney Princess Challenge, which I am so excited for and actually really surprised I haven't done this, even for myself in my personal save file, because I do so much Disney related content anyway, especially on Twitch. If you would like to follow me on Twitch, we do Disney stuff all the time. We're actually doing Disney, we're doing a series on Twitch where we're building modern apartments for modern Disney princesses, completely unrelated. And I hope it doesn't get confusing, but uh, the concept is that the Disney princesses have moved to San Maishuno together and just living their life there. So we're building modern apartments using custom content so it's not for the gallery um, or any kind of gameplay. It's just building and some casts. Um, yeah, so that's Twitch. But on YouTube, we are starting the Disney Princess Challenge, which is a legacy challenge. There's 10 generations. I believe there's a couple of bonus generations as well. Um, which we'll see if I get, <laughs> if I like it enough to do the extra ones. But we're starting with Snow White. And yeah, this will be my first gameplay series on the channel. So Palm Sims was more of a build series with a little bit of gameplay. This is build, cast, but mostly gameplay. So I hope you enjoy that um, if it's not already out yet. It should be out soon. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, in parallel, we're gonna be doing the career homes just cause it's a build series and um, I enjoy building and it, they're just speed builds. They're fairly easy for me to produce. So yeah, we're gonna do those two series side by side as well as the YouTube shorts. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but back to our artist's home. So it's a fairly small one bed uh, house. There is one bed, one bath. No, yes, one bed, one bath, and then an open plan, living, kitchen, dining space downstairs, and kind of art corners scattered throughout. Two easels, maybe even three, um, from, as you can see, two nice big balcony spaces out the back, so they both serve a little bit of a different purpose, but lots of windows, favorite windows in the game, Moschino windows, which just are so versatile, 
and so many nice shapes. Like I liked using that curved one for that corner, corner room. So yeah, lots of natural daylight for our artist. And here I am going to find a different orange door. I wasn't a fan of the one before, unless, no, yeah, I don't think I put it. Um, but yeah, we want, I want a bright orange door for here and I want it to be modern. This is the final door we went with, but also still have that kind of cozy cottage feeling. So it's kind of somewhere in between, not really a cottage, but more like a cozy house. So yeah, we try to find a balance of the two. Bit of landscaping, I wanted it to feel kind of overgrown and She's too busy working on her art to do the landscaping. I don't think she's much of a, uh, she doesn't have much of a green thumb. I think she's just, um, she likes being outside. I think she gets a lot of inspiration from nature, but she likes the overgrown type of, um, of garden that suits more for her personality. Um, yeah, and also blending it in with the surroundings in Brindleton Bay. Didn't want to do a fence, I wanted to keep it open, which uh, you can change, you can put a border around the entire build, but I think in a beautiful lot like this with the beach, I think she just very much is like open, and um, you do get a few NPC sims walking to the left of the building of the house because there is a path, and that's just the path that a lot of NPCs take. You'll see the sand path when I zoom out. So if you want to stop them from being able to look in, you can just put a fence on that side. Okay, moving our way indoors, we are doing pops of color. So that orange wallpaper we brought downstairs um, against that feature wall. And I'm just figuring out the floor plan right now. So this is the open plan kitchen living dining space, which is a decent size, slightly awkward shape. So it does take some playing around. Um, but I knew I wanted to have a big dining table in there because I imagine there's no de there's no office. Yeah, there's no desk, no office. There's a laptop I think I put either there or on the island. Um, but basically, I imagine our artist doesn't work much from a computer or from the laptop. So she just uses her dining table as a bit of a makeshift space. There are some books stacked on top and um, yeah, maybe she works on her laptop from there. And then behind it, uh, we have the kitchen, which is a big open plan kitchen, kind of good for entertaining actually. And uh, that's where you have another island. So there's quite a lot of seating space. Um, I went with a bright green fridge. I don't know if I changed that in the end, a different color, but definitely a colorful fridge. And you'll see there's a lot of like pops of color and mix and match clashing colors and prints throughout the build. Like here I go with completely different color curtains. There you go, a yellow fridge. That's nice, compliments the orange. And a lot of different packs in this build, surprisingly. Nifty knitting felt appropriate in that corner. Um, I don't actually use that table very much, but it, it has some art supplies or knitting supplies in the open cupboards. So thought that was appropriate for an artist. Movie Hangout, I believe, is where that dining table is from with the runner. I thought that was really nice. So a few different packs that I really don't use very often, which is always fun. And that's kind of why I like doing these, this series because it pushes me out of my comfort zone to use things that I wouldn't normally use. So um, yeah, that's what we have gone with. And then, then that corner there with the big windows felt like the perfect space for the lounge. So we have a little TV, some books scattered around. Um, I imagine that she probably has a lot of friends that come over and they get creative together. So there's a lot of seating space and um, yeah, it's, it's a nice sociable space. Carpets, again, what pack is that from? That's either kid or toddler. Have never used this item before. And I was playing around with the swatches for ages to see if I could get it to work because the shape was perfect. And this was feeling like the build of using different unusual items. So I had to make it work, but it's really fun. It's a really fun carpet. It's a little, because there's three, um, and it obviously comes like that, overlapped. It's very big to actually ever work in a kid or a toddler's room. My kids in toddler rooms are never that big. They barely fit one carpet. I make them a little box room. So um, I've never been able to use it in a kid or toddler's room, but in this kind of space, it works perfectly with the bright colors. 
Okay, now we're going and we are cluttering the surfaces and I'm adding, um, Okay, yeah, when I was going through the the uh, clutter items, there was a lot of nifty knitting stuff that I thought worked really well because it gives that kind of arts and crafts vibe. So that art or knitting board um, could be used as an arts and crafts board. So I thought that was perfect for an artist. And then I was originally gonna turn that room off the kitchen um, into a pantry. And then when I found that board, I thought, that was much better suited for our arts and crafts room. So our artist um, has a storage room. I imagine they keep canvases in there, blank canvases or used canvases and all of their supplies. So yeah, that's now the arts and crafts room, no pantry. And then we're doing outside here, a little balcony downstairs or yeah, little not balcony, a patio outside. And I just wanted some cozy tables and chairs. Maybe that's where she hosts and has friends around. And um, did I do an easel out there? I can't remember. There's already an easel downstairs outside, so maybe not. But yeah, nice sociable space with a lot of fairy lights. Thought that was really cozy. And yes, there's an easel. There you go, of course. There's three, no, maybe only two easels in this apartment, in this house, but that balcony, that uh, patio is the perfect place for it. So finishing up the downstairs now, we're finishing up the main living space with some random clutter. Those artworks, the colorful pop art uh, that we have in the entryway here, I put two side by side. Normally they're squares of four and I put two together and it fills the space really nice. I actually don't use those um, because they are very bold, so they don't normally work in my builds, but it felt very appropriate in this one. Okay, then the most annoying part, right at the very end of the catalog, I found the stack of easel, of uh, canvases, and I could not get it to work anywhere, and I think I end up deleting it from the build. Here I am again, trying to make it work, and it's just, was too big and bulky, such a shame that I just couldn't find anywhere for it. I'm trying so hard to, oh, maybe it goes there. Yeah, maybe it does. It didn't fit in the storeroom, unless I sized it down really small and then the canvases were too small. So there you go. Maybe it went, goes to the main entrance, although I think it does get deleted, but anyway. I really wanted this area here to stay as it was. Um, because I like the aprons, I liked the storeroom as as what we used it for, lots of supplies, and I like the little nifty knitting table. So um, I don't know why that nifty knitting table isn't centralized. That please move it back, Emma. Please move it back. That is really bothering me. Emma. Feels like oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. I think I probably would have preferred it central, but anyway, moving on, <laughs> it's too late. Um, okay, now we're finishing up the downstairs. I added this really funky chair from Eco Living in the entrance, which love the shape of that. Haven't used that enough. It's really fun. Good. It was a good place for it because it's quite small. Um, and now we're just doing a little seating area outside in the main porch. There's a lot of outdoor seating space. I imagine she, maybe, you know, in the artist career, you can work from your iPad where it's the, it's not the Wacom, uh, the Wivet, what's it called? The Wavit? No, it's not that, it's a different um, iPad, the equivalent for The Sims, but you can you can do some um, art on there. So maybe that's what our, our artist does, works from the, works from outside a lot on the digital tablet. Um, finishing up with this little picnic area instead of the easel out the front um, with a picnic basket. Again, more sociable space. And then the, the balcony upstairs, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And we went with a, oh yeah, the wind chimes were really nice. Forgot we, I forgot a lot that we have those, but they're really nice and they give you a, or give your sense a happy moodlet all the time. So it's easy items to put in. There you go, a yoga mat. Um, I thought that was fun for our, for our artists to wind down in the evenings with a bit of yoga. And then um, a couple of planters just to fill that wall for some greenery up there, a cool box maybe to enjoy some drinks after some yoga. 
And now we're moving onto the bedroom. So again, very small, small space. Actually, no, it, it's a decent sized space, but awkward floor plan, which makes it feel small. So I added in a feature wall, um, which we would back the bed to, which gave that kind of separation to the hallway um, from the stairs to the upstairs balcony that cr creates a hallway. And then we have a feature wall that we could paint orange, put some mirrors and clutter on there. We have a wardrobe. Um, I tried to do something a little bit creative with that. So I wanted to do a custom wardrobe um, or like a custom shelving unit. I tried to put two shelves and push them into the wardrobe. The first one didn't quite work, but this one from Eco Living, the metal frame one, I thought that looked really nice and it blends nicely with that cabinet from Parenthood. A little seating area on the other corner few ottomans scattered around and a TV upstairs, which I love. Love TVs in bedrooms. And um, yeah, I just thought this, it, it came together really nicely. Nice colors, warm, um, with pops of orange. So I'm gonna leave you here. There's a, a, a couple more things to see in the build, but that is um, our artist's home. We have a floralist's home, which I think I'll probably post after this. We have a civil, we have an engineer or, or like a civil designer. Um, I think that's probably coming out in the next couple of weeks. And then we'll move moving on to our next couple of careers. So yeah, stay tuned for the career builds and also our Disney Princess Challenge. But thank you so much for all of the support, especially on the YouTube shorts. I've really been enjoying those. They will continue. Um, but now we are easing our way into long videos again. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I hope you had a, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.